with the uh, the gentleman <laughs> who runs the uh, the drug cartel, the Sinaloa cartel. I really don't envy Sean Penn right now. I think that the man's ego got in the way of whatever brains were left after uh, all those fast times at Ridgemont High and all those fast times at Hollywood High and all those fast times getting high. I would say that his brains are so scrambled he doesn't know what he was doing and he was so desperate to be relevant and to be... Look, he won Academy Awards. He's revered as an actor, right? But what did he want that he doesn't have? He wants respect for his intelligence. Okay, he's like Frito in The Godfather. I'm smart. I'm Send smart. Send Fredo off to do this. Send Fredo off to do that. Let Fredo take care of some Mickey Mouse nightclub somewhere. I can handle things. I'm <laughs> smart. I'm like everybody says. It's like, dumb. I'm smart. And I want respect. That's who Sean Penn is inside. He wants respect. He wanted to show the world how smart he was. So he invents the idea that he's a journalist. Yeah, now he's a journalist. So in the past, this journalist went to Iran and told us what wonderful people they were. Remember that? He told us the Ayatollah was a superb man and the Iranians were wonderful. He didn't talk one minute about the torture chambers and the death cells in Iran. That's Sean Penn for you. Then he went to Venezuela and talked about uh, the genius of Hugo Chavez and what a wonderful man he was. He has an affinity for very evil people. So now, what is he doing here? He didn't go there to meet El Chapo, he says. He did it for another reason. Listen to clip 11. I have a regret that the entire discussion about this article um, ignores its purpose, which was to con try to contribute to this discussion about the uh, policy and the war, war on drugs. Let's go, let's go to the big picture of what we, what we all want. We all want this drug problem to stop. We all want the, the killings Sorry, in Chicago to stop. That has nothing to, to do stop. with this. Now, now he's going in. Now he's a drug czar. He went suddenly from being a, an alleged user to a drug czar. Now he goes into calling himself a journalist in clip 12. Listen to this one. When you get the story that every journalist in the world wanted, there's a lot of green-eyed monsters who are going to come give you a kiss. Of course I know that there are people who don't like me out of the gate. At the same time, you know when journalists who want to say that I'm not a journalist, uh, well, I want to see the license that says that they're a journalist. Do you notice how shaky his voice is? I mentioned that to the young men who produced for me this morning when we reviewed this a snippet of an interview. There's a shakiness to his voice. He's very unsure of himself, very insecure, which I've noticed before with Sean Penn. When he's on screen, he's very confident. When he's reading other scripts... And he's got a good director. He's very, very, very good at, in speaking. But when he's off script, he's very shaky and very weak and very hesitant. But what he just said there is kind of ludicrous. Now he's a journalist. Now, why is he trying to establish the fact that he's a journalist? I'll give you one reason why. Because if you're a journalist, you're immune from prosecution by the U.S. Justice Department for uh, not giving up uh, the source of a wanted fugitive. So now he's hiding behind the idea that he's a journalist when he's not a journalist. Uh, I know the difference between being a journalist and being a commentator because I'm the latter, not the former. And I'm proud to tell you, I am a commentator. Sean Penn is neither a commentator nor a journalist. He is an actor. That's what he is. And just because the San Francisco Chronicle or the drug magazine, Rolling Stoned, uh, gave him some fake credentials does not make the man a journalist. He is a, at most, what would you say, a commentator? What is he, a columnist? That doesn't make him a journalist. I mean, with all due respects to a field that I often bash, there is such a thing as objective journalism. It's very difficult to achieve, but we all respect it when it is achieved. In our country, unfortunately, they've gone so far that they won't name a perpetrator if the perpetrator is not white uh, or show you a picture unless he's a, a white man. You understand that. We understand how it's been bent out of shape. That's also not journalism. And that's the kind of thing we're all trying to, uh, you know, leave behind us in this country. The nightmare that we're living through over these last years, which was not started by Obama, but certainly has uh, met metastasized into a cancer beyond belief. So we're hoping that when Trump becomes president, we have journalism back again. Again, But Sean Penn is not a journalist, is my main point. The point is, is that he's terrified of being indicted by the U.S. government. But his real danger, in my estimation, is not from the U.S. government because it's run by like-minded individuals. 
I do not. I really don't think that uh, Loretta Lynch is going to indict Sean Penn for not, uh, you know, doing what they say has to be done. It's according to Michael Levine, the DEA undercover officer was on the show. His real threat is going to come from the Mexican government. They do not have the same niceties of law in Mexico that uh, we have here. And in in fact, the Mexican government may indict Sean Penn for what he did. We'll have to wait and see. We're all looking from the outside in. Back in a minute. What did happen was that in record time, the issue was res uh, the situation was resolved. Uh, the soldiers uh, are safely returned, and I think that the frankly, I think that the d diplomacy that was established during the negotiation of the accord helped facilitate that. Uh, speedy, I think it's really even speedy uh, resolution of the situation. Okay, Nancy Pelosi likes what happened in the Gulf. She loves that our soldiers, I mean, I guess sailors, she didn't know the difference. Just some dopey guys in uniforms were captured, apologized, one of them forced to wear a burqa-like outfit and admit that they were wrong. She calls that a diplomacy. Now, the only question is, is that which senators and congresspeople in America uh, have relatives, distant or otherwise, who are going to directly or indirectly benefit from the new accord with Iran and the release of $100 billion uh, over the weekend? Which one of them will be in construction projects along with Iran? Which one of them will be in ravioli producing plants with the Iranians? Which one of them will be in tuna producing plants uh, with the Iranians? I really don't know. But people are saying that the reason so many senators and Congress people are so enthusiastic about the new accord and the diplomacy uh, with Iran is because their families uh, or cronies will benefit enormously from the New Deal. That's all. That's what people are saying. So here we are. It's the almost the end of Friday already with 50 seconds left to hour two. And the big issue of the day is the fact that uh, in the boxing match last night of the debates, Trump knocked Cruz out of the ring. And I wish Cruz the best because I want to see this guy serve the United States of America as attorney general or as defense secretary. What a country it would be. Could you imagine? The only one on that stage who I don't think is qualified for anything is Rubio. I mean, I don't know what Rubio could run. I don't know that we have a department of ice cream. That that maybe he can run an ice cream department, but we don't have one. May, wait a minute, he could take over Ben and Jerry's, and we could rename it. It could be called Ben and Rubio's, or Rubio's and Jerry's, or something like that. <laughs> Dow is down 400 points, and where's the president who told us the economy's never been better? <laughs> Who's he partying with today? Oh, he's on YouTube. We got that sound. When you hear this. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Wake up, please, Susie, wake up. Wake up, please, Susie, wake up. So the con man of the White House just signed another executive order, right? I'm not making it up. The con man signed an executive order that gives John Kerry the authority to sign off on the expected IAEA verification with Iran and give the terrorist Islamic terror state of Iran $100 billion to use to build missiles. You can't believe this. Now, the other day he gave a speech about how the economy was doing great under him and there was great applause, which was a shocker because... 
What happened today? The market fell another 400 and some odd points. Walmart announced they're going to shut 154 stores in the United States. All the leftists will applaud. But take a guess what that really means. 16,000 employees are going to lose their job, 10,000 of them in the United States. Do you have any idea what this really means to the people who work in Walmart? Forget the leftists who don't like Walmart because it's not a boutique store that they approve of, that they don't even shop in. I love that about all the leftists. They want cute little boutique stores in their neighborhood that they can't afford to shop in. But they hate Walmart because it's an evil box store. Well, the economy's not doing well, Mr. Obama. Walmart's closing 269 stores, more than half of them in the United States. Another big number of them in Brazil. That's a big deal. That means something's going on in the economy. But something else is going on. The president's popularity has sunk to such an, a low that he's now hiding behind YouTube appearances for his interviews. You talk about journalism? He goes to three unknown pajama-wearing bloggers who have little tiny YouTube channels. I swear I'm not making this up. And the President of the United States of America, who is too cowardly to appear on any radio talk show in the country that opposes his policies, he will not appear on a single radio talk show that opposes his policies. He goes on a YouTube channel and discusses things that you will not believe simply to reach idiots who watch YouTube on a regular basis. Listen to this right now. Here's the first one. Something that's really important to me and my audience is women's health. Yeah. And recently I was shocked to learn that pads, tampons, and other menstrual products are taxed as luxury goods in yeah. over in 40 states. Yeah. And I don't are know anyone kidding? who has a period that thinks it's a luxury. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because I, I think that's fair to say. Michelle would agree with you on that. Yes, because it's oh, something that's please. part of our everyday lives and right. is really crucial to our health as women. Right. And so I want to know, why do these items continue to be taxed? I have to tell you, I have no idea why states this is the president. would tax these as luxury items. I, I suspect it's because men were making the laws yeah. when those tax uh -huh, were passed. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, I think it's pretty sensible for women in those states that you just mentioned uh, to work to get those taxes removed. Those aren't federal taxes that are imposed. That are, those are state taxes, state law, so it'd be governors and state legislatures who uh, would have to reverse those. Here's the President of the United States, the same week the stock market is plummeting, the same week that 10 Navy sailors are humiliated by a terror nation, sitting down with a YouTuber and discussing state taxes on tampons. But it gets even better. Next, he speaks to another YouTuber about another very important topic, something on the mind of every American. Listen to this one. As a black male yeah. who wears his hat backwards from time to time, I get racially profiled. Yeah. Okay, the most recent story I have for you is driving, pulled over to send some text messages, cop pulled up behind me, right. call for backup. They're all over me, harassing me for my ID, registration. Right. Third cop is driving by, kind of just like, you know, I get harassed often. Right. I've learned oh, to live with boy. the harassment, but people are dying oh, now. Poor man. I can't, poor man. I can't sit by and let that happen. So my thing to you is, I feel like law enforcement, they're just bullies with badges at this point. Oh, they're shut up, you on punk. Camera, they're killing people, and they go to the court of law. You're a bully on YouTube, you little punk, you. So shut up. Really shut up, you cowardly punk, hiding behind a YouTube channel. If it wasn't for the cops, you'd be roadkill. I can't believe that the president, I know how bad these people are on YouTube. They're basically bullies. They're cyber bullies. But now you have the president humiliating us as people who have to listen to this, going before these lowlifes. And the first one discusses taxes on tampons. And this one talks about being bullied by cops. He said he was texting, didn't he? Didn't that, didn't that YouTube punk just say he was texting and was pulled over by a cop and then he turned it into a racial incident? Goodness, it gets worse by the day because, wait, it gets worse by the minute. The president today went to another YouTuber who interviewed him to show you how desperate he is. Barack Obama is more desperate than Sean Penn for a little more fame, to milk a little more fame out of, him, uh, out of his uh, imagery here. He goes to another one. 
Listen to this one now. Now, our boy Donald Trump.